A belated greetings and salutations to everybody out there. We are, of course, in the middle of the Legend of the Stars qualifier rounds. This is number three. There's one more to go before the actual tournament in December. And yeah, it's a one versus one. The map today is Desert Planet, and I have a co-pilot today. Heaven is here with me. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Brink. Thank you. And freaking tastic. Players today are Ajax and Mephi, both of them going UEF. Are we taking any bets on who is going to win this one? Um, I'm guessing... Like, it's actually difficult. I believe Ajax does not play super actively. Mephi has been topping ladder scoreboards for a while. Like, they're both candidates for the tournament champion, I'd say. So. I was going to go with Mephi if I had to guess, because I think he's much more in practice. We'll just have to see how much good that practice does him. Got first land factory, second air for Ajax pushing forward to the Hydro. That is an awfully long ways to walk. Mephi is going for a bit more conservative build with some power generators on his spawn location, and he's going for two air factories. Do you have a build for this particular map that you like to stick with? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I think what I do is closer to what Ajax is doing. Like, I also open with uh, 3 mixes, and then I go for, like, uh, the Hydro, I think 3 or 4 power generators air, and then some extra land factories. Air is super important on this map because of how long the travel time is. Yes, it is deceptively large. The first time I ever played on this one, I made the horrible mistake of trying to walk everywhere and then realized about three minutes into the game that things just weren't getting where they were supposed to be. So not only is air important to transport your units around, you also want to have a load of interceptors and possibly bombers to help get out and maintain control of the map. There's also quite a bit of reclaim. Uh, 38 and 75 boulders, several clumps right next to the base. It looks like a lot, but I would be hesitant to do too much as far as economy upgrading off of your home expansion. And then there are additional clumps out on the edges and in the center. So you will want to get out and get some manual reclaim as time allows. Already seeing some early aggression from Mephi getting mech marines over to the other side of the map to try to pick off some of these outside engineers. Looks like they're pretty well placed, too. Mephi is using a uh, very air-centric setup. I'm actually kind of surprised. Like, I'm not sure if uh, he may have made a little mistake there, because like the number of power generators and factories he's queued up without really expanding. Like, we're just going to see what's happening i guess he is like, doing okay on power i think he's gonna end up slightly mass stalled when his other production comes online but overall it's looking relatively well balanced he is maintaining with manual reclaim and i think the biggest question is going to be whether or not he can maintain the second air factory when it comes up he did lose his mech marine on the left hand side to a tank that came through so the first early aggressors down no engineer kill there the second is still moving around the right, but I'm not sure whether it will actually get an opportunity to get to an engineer. Let me get my command set here. Set focus army and... Minus one. Hey yo, we're good. Excellent. Got an early T1 bomber out for Ajax that is going to head over to the right hand side and if you'll notice he did pick up an early air win. He's got two interceptors over top of Mephi's factories but Mephi does have two air factories online now so he'll quickly outstrip Ajax's production in this earliest portion. He also did get a bomber over to the left which might be able to pick up the engineers being dropped by transport over there now. That would be a tough loss to take. Oh, that's a good bomb. Excellent. Three engineers and some damage on the P-Gens. Way to line it up. It's I was thinking I was thinking a little bit bad luck for uh, Ajax to send the bomber to the right side where Mephi's ACU is, so he doesn't have a chance to uh, kill exterior engineers that are expanding and get benefit out of it. But uh, yeah, he's just using it at the base and locking yeah. the factories and stuff. With as many kills as he was able to get on that one, I think that was definitely well worth it. That was about yeah, that's true. 
two thirds of Mephi's available engineers just went up in smoke. Bomber placement is extremely important because they do drop in a straight line with the flight path on the bomber. So if you come in from the wrong direction, you might only pick up one to two engineer kills, but if you're careful about your approach, you might be able to lay out napalm over the top of many, many T1 units. So you, I think that one might have been a little bit by luck, but if you do have the opportunity, you need to orient your bombers correctly to get the most damage out of them. Radar going down in the center for Ajax, so he is going to rule as king of the hill, at least for the earliest portion of the game. Get a little bit of that reclaim. I think this game is actually the first time I see someone expand with a transport on this map instead of just sending engineers regularly. That's odd, because I've seen both ways in quite a few instances, but I think the transports are doing some good, because look how much quick, more quickly Ajax is locking down his expansions. We've got nothing to the left for Mephi, and we've got the ACU with five mass extractors on the right, but no land factories yet. Ajax is already building his second land factory on the left with almost all the mass extractors locked down. And then he's already got a land factory going down on the right as well. So that is some powerful expansion. I think that Mephi may have made a mistake dedicating too many engineers to the same side where his ACU is. Now he's lacking engineers in the top expansion and that's why it's so delayed. I think he could have gotten it faster if he just separated the ACU from the engineers in the expansion. I'm sure it probably doesn't help when you lose four or five of your engineers to a bomber as well. <laughs> yeah, of course not. Mephi's got 2,100 reclaim at the moment and is pushing 29 eco. If I flip over here to Ajax, we've got 3,100 reclaim, so a thousand more, a third more reclaim and 41 mass per tick. So Ajax leading quite handily in the economy game at the seven minute mark. It looks like Mephi's bomber connected with uh, Ajax drop at the bottom, so That's expansion may be relatively even, but uh, Mephi does uh, fall behind in score quite a lot. Looks like we're going on three land factories and three air factories in Mephi's base with a fourth land going down. I think he's scaling up his land production in the rear because he sees this over on the left. He doesn't have a whole lot of build power outside of his base. Whereas Ajax is definitely catering to the needs of both sides of the map with some extra build power out on the front line. Both of them are streaming some units from the rear, but it's interesting to see how much more spread out Ajax is. He's also got a T2 mass extractor back in the base with a second one on upgrade but paused. Looks like Mephi has not even attempted a T2 mass extractor at this point. Well, Atrix has achieved a 50% uh, map control split on his end, but Mephi is behind with the expansion, so Atrix can afford to eco and build units at the same time, while Mephi is forced to construct units. He is at a five mass extractor disadvantage right now. Actually seven if you count the ones in the middle, but he is getting T1 bomber fire down on those, so they might go down. I don't know why Ajax is not using his air power to lock that. I think he's focusing on uh, a unit distribution, because the way he uses his units is uh, going to be uh, very important. Like, he has the chance to um, simply uh, outrate uh, Mephi just by spreading uh, attacking tanks into multiple places, and Mephi doesn't have the intel or the time to react. And at the same time, uh, Ajax has this breach at the top, so he's uh, probably focusing on uh, not dying to a defeat in detail situation yes. in either expansion. <laughs> so I guess he's picking up mass extractors on the entry. right as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Harassment, so, harassment everywhere. This raid is where his tension is going into. Mephi just the, doubled down on air production, so we might see an air control shift. 
Ajax has a few interceptors at his disposal, uh, not quite as many as Mephi, and Mephi's gonna pull ahead pretty quickly now. Only one air factory on Ajax's side, but he does have it very heavily assisted, about four factories total worth of production, whereas Mephi's got three physical factories, and then one of them is doubled up on production. So quite a substantial increase there. The top expansion is going to fall though, and uh, the bottom expansion for Mephi doesn't look so healthy either. I think this is going to be over by a map control victory, simply because of Ray. Ajax definitely making better use of his units, although he does have quite a few more units at his disposal, so that might not be a fair comparison. T2 Air Factory. Mephi just took the upgrade and he's building a transport, so we might be seeing ACU cheese heading back to the factory to try to do some damage. Uh, no, that's that's a ghetto snipe. That's a ghetto build, and it's you it's not a correct. good. It's not a good a ghetto build. This is like uh, he knows he lost and. That's like his his only uh, chance at getting back into the game. Going out in a blaze of glory. But he does have a huge air advantage now. If uh, Actually, I'm going to go hop back into the first person perspective. Uh, 27 interceptors on Mephi's side. And we've only got 21 on Ajax's side. Throw in the meat shield of the transports and the little bit of extra anti-air. There's definitely an air win in Mephi's future, but I'm not sure whether he can keep the transports alive for the snipe. Ajax knows. He knows now. So he's going to have counter ready, I think. I don't know. He did not scout any of the transports, and he only got a very brief blip of a couple of mech marines. Well, if, he did scout he the maps. It. I think he knows. Okay. T1 yeah, he knows. Try to protect the base. T2 flock is out. Adric's won. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that flak, even if it doesn't kill the transport, it will blow all the mech marines off the bottom, so it just completely negates any damage that could be done. Right. This Thanks. was very one sided. I was absolutely wrong on my pick for this one. <laughs> Maybe Ajax was getting some practice in somewhere, but he did exceptionally well on this map. Perfect control. Ajax is the kind of guy who uh, is AFK all month, and then there is a tournament, uh, he joins it without prior practice, and he just kills everybody. I don't know how he works, <laughs> but apparently uh, he manages somehow. Does he play other RTSs that kind of keep his skills up to date, or...? Mm, I don't know. Possibly. That is very odd. Looks like these Entees are about to run slam into the flak. Interceptors out for Ajax. Gonna chase those transports down, and that is the end of it. Mephi Control Kang throwing out the GG. Well played. Well played indeed. That is going to wrap everything up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and share it with someone. If you want to support the channel, catch the streams, or join the Discord, check out the links in the description. Thank you all for being at least partially insane, and I will see you in the next one.